over the summer, uh, last summer, uh, summer of 2024, I had the privilege to um, serve as a intern for my local congressman, um, you know, at, in the district office. So I was taking constituent calls, whether they needed help with their visas, uh, Social Security, all those kind of things. But um, also, if they just had concern, if they had a message for the congressman, they would let me know. And my congressman uh, happened to be a Democrat. Um, so right, I remember initially right after that debate with Joe Biden and Donald Trump, uh, I remember my reaction to watching the debate. I was just very like, it was almost just so cringy to watch in the sense where, you know, this, this, it just didn't feel like a debate because Joe Biden was just tripping over his words. You almost felt bad for the guy. Forget about policy. I just wanted to hear what he had to say, but everybody kind of knew that that debate was just going to be horrendous, but I didn't think it would be that horrendous. So after that, then the media and, you know, the people, the curtains finally became unleashed, you know, the whole rhetoric within the deep Democratic Party and the upper echelon of the Democratic Party saying, you know, Joe Biden is as sharp as ever and he's, you know, capable of leading the country still and all this kind of jazz and, you know, he's still sharp, he's the last, he still makes decisions, all this kind of stuff, the curtains became uh, unraveled. And you had Democrats within the party, and that's why I brought up my um, internship with the congressman, because I remember every day um, there would be uh, dozens and dozens of callers um, saying, you know what, it's time to move on from Joe Biden, and it's time, or we should keep Joe Biden. And what we ended up doing was keeping a tally, literally a tally, Pro-Joe, anti-Joe, pro-Joe, anti-Joe. And these weren't coming from Republicans. This was division within lifelong Democratic, you know, blue voters. And what was fascinating is I saw a generally 50-50 split of people that wanted him out and wanted Kamala out or Kamala in. So, um, you know, obviously everybody knew that if Joe was going to drop out, the only candidate you could put up was Kamala. Realistically, why? Because the, all the campaign funds that Joe raised was within the Biden-Harris campaign. You can't just give it a, a Gavin Newsom or a Josh Shapiro. So I think we all know what happened. You know, I have reason, good reason to believe that Joe Biden still thinks he could win an election on his own. And it wasn't his decision to ultimately leave. I think I wouldn't call it a coup necessarily, but I would call it a, a forceful removal. Um, they're like... Uh, you know, Joe, you just got to go. You know, Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer, and uh, Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris were like, all right, Joe, we looked at the internal polling. It's not looking good, but you got to go. Fast forward to now. You know, Kamala had a good burst, you know, when she got the nomination. She had a good burst during the DNC. But now the walls are seemingly starting to collapse a little bit. The polls are swinging in favor of Trump. She's not gaining in the polls. And I know the polls are not the most accurate, but you can look at these general trend lines and notice, hey, something is going on. And now the question becomes then again, you know, was Kamala the right choice to put in? You know, Alan Littman, who is a professor, a very controversial professor who has these 13 keys. He's an historian who predicts, you know, who will win the presidency he said himself that if Joe Biden were to drop out, you know, one of the keys to the White House would be flipped. He still predicts that Kamala will win, which I heavily disagree with because I think he is not as um, credible as some people say. But that's a story for another day. But, uh, you know, I think about the Kamala-Trump debate. Um, you know, people, uh, you know, whether you're left, right or independent, Everybody knew that Kamala Harris just won that debate, not because she, you know, presented better policies or things like that, but she laid so many cheese traps for Trump just to grab on, you know, about crowd sizes and things like that. And Trump is very <laughs> proud of his crowd sizes, let's just say that. But what happened was within two to three weeks, nobody talked about it, you know. It was just a debate. People forgot, you know. It wasn't really radically changing. And then you had the Elon Musk endorsement the rally in, uh, in Pennsylvania, and then you had the VP debate where, you know, a lot of people thought that um, uh, Senator J.D. Vance did better than Tim Walz, and he was that sigh of relief 
for the Republican Party. And now once you have this momentum, it's like a snowball. It just keeps on rolling and rolling. So now my question does become like if the Democrats just waited it out with Biden, I think they could have also, you know, passed through the hysteria of the debate because the debates don't really add much anymore these days. You know, back in the debate, back, uh, back in the day, it was a lot more um you know, when the parties were more closely aligned policy-wise, just about, you know, which is a better leader, which one is going to enforce the policy in a more efficient way. That was the question at hand, but now it's a little different. So now you have Trump gaining this momentum, and now, you know, you have Democrats spinning around. You know, do I think Joe Biden was the best candidate that could be Donald John Trump? The answer is 100% no. A Josh Shapiro, a Gavin Newsom could definitely even a J.B. Pritzker definitely wiped the floor with Trump. But because of the circumstance you were in and the sticky situation that the Democratic Party was in, I have now reason to believe that Joe Biden would have been a more fierce contender than Kamala Harris. And, you know, Kamala Harris, I think she did have the ability. Obviously, there's still two weeks till the election, and she's still within running. She is not. The, the election is not over. It's far from over. But Kamala Harris, in my opinion, should be doing a lot better than what, you know, what the numbers say and what the general consensus is. I mean, it no offense, like it does not take much to take down a Donald John Trump. It's very, um, you know, I think Barack Obama soundly would defeat Trump like in a heartbeat, even Michelle Obama or any big, huge Democrat. So this is this is interesting stuff. The idea that, you know, people had trust in Biden. You know, black voters in the South really, uh, you know, cling to him, you know, based on what he did as his time as a senator and all those types of things. Um, But, yeah, Kamala Harris, you know, to be sympathetic to Kamala Harris, she was just kind of put into this, you know, without without really any guidance. And, you know, the Democratic Party internally is at a mess with itself. So you need that whole party to be united in order to push forward a good sound campaign that is unified but i don't think the democrat party is unified i think the obamas of the world and the joe bidens of the world and the kamala team all those three parties are just clashing with one another and i think now you know when it's all said and done joe biden might be a very pissed man or he just might be fine and just be eating his double chocolate ice cream or chocolate chocolate chip ice cream But uh, that'll do it today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy your day, and I'll see you tomorrow.